for a few moments this morning. I'm going to do some teaching and preaching again as we continue our series from the book of James chapter 1 entitled Hope Reimagined. And if we were to select a subtitle for uh, this morning's message, it would simply be a word on wisdom. Hope Reimagined, a word on wisdom. Listen, it, it's been well, well said that uh, unless what is above you is in you, you will soon give in to what is around you. And while, you gotta play it back on Facebook, and, and, and while there are a number of things above us that need to be within us, James would argue, and James makes a point, he would have you and I know this morning that one thing every troubled child of God needs from above is wisdom. Uh, in, verse, in verse 5, as James continues this practical discourse to persecuted and scattered Christians who needed to grow in their matured response to adversity, James makes uh, this is his, his focal point. He tells them in, in so many words that facing times of testing with a mature and with a winning outlook demands insight beyond one's own sight. It, it, it demands that, that, that hope reimagined or hope revived is is directly connected to your asking for and acquiring wisdom from above. That's what James wants every reader and every listener to understand if you don't get anything else out of, out of verse number five this morning. Now listen, leading, leading up to that, we, we pointed out last week in verse number four uh, that, that part of reimagining Hope includes submitting and surrendering to the agony and the pain of growth and, and the discomfort of, of letting endurance play itself out to its end, to not sabotaging, shortcutting, or short-circuiting the process, allowing endurance, the process of building and gaining endurance, exhausts itself. Uh, we went on to explore the fact that Endurance is not simply something you build up through life, but that it is also something that you build upon for life. That is to simply say that processing a brave patience uh, in adversity, or uh, rather possessing a brave uh, uh, endurance or a brave patience in adversity allows you to possess everything else you need for victorious living. James is trying to help us understand in his own way that, that endurance is a part of the foundation that, that allows you to live a victorious life. Without uh, endurance, you will not develop a spirit of joy. Without endurance, you will not maintain a spirit of peace. Without endurance, you will become complacent. A contentment will become envy and, and complacence without a spirit uh, of, of endurance. You'll, 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 you'll speak your mind instead of holding your tongue. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He, he's trying to help them understand and us understand that in possessing a level of mature endurance is absolutely fundamental to us developing in other areas of life. And so, and so as James continues to fall the thought of, of, of maintaining a joyful disposition in the face of intense opposition and, and building a brave patience in the face of what seems like losing odds. James, he, he turns their attention and he turns our, our attention to the opportunity that is presented in adversity. James says in verse number five, listen, but if any of you, if any of you lack wisdom, he says, ask 
God. He says, let him ask of God. Now listen, to avoid any, any misunderstanding, I want to be very clear uh, to the person who's tempted to puff up their chest and, and stick their nose in the air uh, that James is not suggesting that you may or may not need wisdom in the face of adversity. Uh, James does not uh, say with the phrase, if you lack wisdom, he is not suggesting that, that there is a possibility that you do not lack wisdom. In fact, to the contrary, James is saying emphatically, he's saying with very clear distinction, he's saying flat-footedly that, that your trials, your troubles, and your adversity expose the fact that you need wisdom. He, he says to every reader and every listener, the fact that, 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 that your experience with trial, your experience with adversity exposes your intrinsic need for wisdom. And so the phrase should really be better understood to me, since all of you are inadequately equipped with wisdom, you ought to ask God for it. That's what James just said. James, James is not leaving up on discussion. He is not leaving up on debate. James is making a point that since you in fact are inadequately equipped, you need to ask God. You need to ask God for wisdom. Now, now listen, if you're looking for a good functioning concept of what wisdom looks like as, as it is used here in this context, I want you to understand that wisdom, wisdom could be described as, as truth uh, that, that, that you act upon. It is, it is knowledge that you apply practically to live the victorious life in your trials. Wisdom uh, is being led by God in your will and acknowledging God in your walk. That's, that's what wisdom is. It is being led by God in your will and acknowledging God in your walk. Wisdom is not just a matter of head knowledge and understanding. No, wisdom, as, as James is communicating it here, is the ability to rightly use knowledge and to skillfully apply understanding for God-centered living in your life. It is, it is the, to, to meaningfully materialize God's method of living. It is, it is a matter of using sound spiritual strategies to arrive at your decisions. That, that is what James is communicating here with this concept and this idea of, of a person who lacks lacks wisdom, a person who lacks the ability to take what you know about God and actually walk that out in your life. James says if you are having trouble doing that, you need to have a conversation with God. And listen, the implied point that James is making here is that not only are your troubles inevitable, James is also pointing out the fact that your doubt and your lack of clarity in your troubles is also inevitable. James is saying you are going to experience uncertainty and you are going to experience indecision when you encounter trouble and turbulence. And James suggests that when your heart ask questions that your head cannot answer. Now, when you find yourself in circumstances that are beyond your capacity to combat or comprehend, ask God for wisdom to fill in the blanks. Now, ask God for wisdom to connect the dots. Ask God for wisdom to clear the fog so that you might see clearly what God is up to. Truth is, the truth is, the truth is, the reality of adversity are often God's invitations for you to talk to Him. Yes. You don't, 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 y'all don't, 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 don't ignore that. But the ugly truth is, the reality of adversity is often God's invitation to you to begin talking to Him. When you start asking questions like, what's next and where am I? God says, I got you right where 
Oh, now, now, now it's time to have a conversation. Sometimes God uses the conflicts and the crisis in your life as conversation starters. God between, between you and your God. And, and as he uses them as your, your opportunity to ask him for wisdom to meet the task that you're facing. It's your opportunity to ask God for clarity about where you are and where you're going, or who you are and who he wants you to become. It's the occasion to ask God for sight and insight to see your way through and give you the discipline and the courage to hold up under adversity. It's your invitation to ask God to deposit wisdom. It's your invitation, it's your opportunity to ask God to, to, to meet your need, to, to meet the, the, the task that is facing you to, to deposit wisdom, watch this now, and to maximize and not waste the opportunity to grow and to mature. God, God said, listen, listen, I know, I know you're freaking out and you're tripping out. I know it's hard and I know it's turbulent and there are more questions than there are answers. But don't miss the opportunity to maximize. The trouble and the trial. Don't, don't, don't be so caught up in the trouble that you miss the opportunity to grow and to mature. And the way that you grow and the way that you mature is to ask God to help you walk out what the Word of God is speaking. But watch this, watch this. With honor, with honor, with honor to give you hope reimagined is the fact that God joyously responds to our request for his wisdom. <laughs> James says it like this in verse number five, and I'm trying to hurry. James says in verse number five, God gives wisdom to all generously. Listen, in, in, in context, the word translated there generously, it carries the idea, the thought of, of, of God giving wisdom without restraint. Carries the idea of God giving wisdom without reluctance on a continuous or a continual basis. That is to say that God graciously, God without reluctance, God without restraint, pours out wisdom and keeps on pouring out wisdom if you ask. James says that God's wisdom is given to his children without condition. That's what he, he's trying to help you understand, you and I. He, he gives it without condition. He gives it without reservation, without hesitation, and without calculation. He, he, his offer is boundless. It's, it's bottomless, and it is without bias. Wisdom from God does not have to be pried out of his head. And he doesn't have to be convinced whether you are in the heat of the crisis or in the cool of the calm. No sincere seeker is sent away empty. No cup Seeking wisdom is sent away empty when you ask in sincerity and seeking to understand. He says he gives wisdom to everyone without compromise generously. But watch this. This is the preaching point here. Uh, 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 for, for, for hope reimagined, it, it is that that God is, ooh, this is this is the part I, I love about God and you ought to love about him too. But what James is, is, is really getting at here is the fact that God is predisposed to giving wisdom to his children. What, 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 are, you, what are you talking about? I'm saying it is a part of God's nature to generously give. In other words, in other words, God, He can't help but to give. He is compelled. It is something that He must do. He doesn't feel like Himself if He ain't giving. 
Uh, his, his, his help is offered because of who he is and, and who he has made us in him, what he has made you in him. And so regardless of where you find yourself, God is waiting on pins and needles to pour out of, 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 of himself all of the wisdom that you can think to pray and ask for. God's help is not, is not uh, predicated on, on your worth. It's not predicated on your ability, your vocabulary, or your churchy, Church of Christ prayer, or, or your level of sorrow or strength. God is ready to give it if you will just ask. Watch this. James, James says God... God not only offers wisdom to all joyfully, but this is the part I really like. Uh, he also offers it to all without judgment. It's right there in verse number, verse number five. James says God gives wisdom to all generously. Watch this. And he says, and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You ask for it, He'll give it generously. He'll give it. He'll give it without reproach. In other words, in other words, God does not give wisdom while searching for fault at the same time. God, God, you know, if, if you're like me, you, you you hate asking folk for stuff sometimes. Come on, I'm talking to somebody out there who's watching you. You you hate to have to ask anybody for anything. Because you've had you had some experiences in your in your own life where you ask somebody for help. Come on, you know what I'm telling you. You 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 know where I'm going. Amen. He, I, I, there, there's, there's, there's an aunt in my family that got more money probably than everybody in the family put together. Uh, but 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 when but when, when, when family members found themselves in tight spots, they would rather cut their tongue out than ask her for anything. Because she had a way, praise the Lord, of, of, of letting you know just how sorry you were. Now she would give you what you asked for. Y'all know folks like that. But before they give you what you asked for, they're going to give you a whole bunch of stuff you didn't ask for. Amen. They're going to they, they give you some judgment that really doesn't help your situation. Say amen if you can. They, 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 they have a way of making you feel worse than you were before. Before the, 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 the Christ is struck, but, but James is saying we don't have to worry about that, about that with the Lord. God does not give a wisdom while searching for fault at the same time. He, he does not humiliate you in the name of helping you. He will not respond to your reaching out to him with reproach from him. His goal is generosity with no strings attached, no expectation of a return favor. God gives just because he is God. He does not use our request as an opportunity to dredge up the past in his mind or cast a light on your immaturity or inadequacy in his psyche. He does not use the occasion to recall and add up your past mistakes uh, on his mental balance sheet. No, James says instead of doing all of that, Instead, instead of that, in, in, in the face of your, let's face it, sometimes our own wickedness and worldliness, James says God offers a revelation of himself. He offers a revelation of his, of his nature and of his character and of his essence. And he, he demonstrates his love in our trials and our troubles by pouring out his wisdom. In other words, that's what that's really, that's part of what James is, is is helping the people that those Hebrew Christians understand there. That that one of the ways that God demonstrates his I'm putting it to you like this. Let me let me rewind it and give the old the old clip translation. Sometimes God does not answer your request for relief in trouble by offering 
material and tangible things that seem to be a remedy. Okay. Uh, some of us find ourselves in trouble and we ask God for more money. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Some of, of us find ourselves in trouble and we ask God for a new relationship. <laughs> Some of us find ourselves in trouble and we ask for a, a change in circumstances, a, 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 another, another occupation, another employment opportunity. That, that's, how we, that's how we expect and look for God to show his love. But James is trying to help us understand here that one of the ways that God manifests his love when we are in trouble is not so much to bail out. But it is, it is, it is a pouring out of wisdom. I know that's not sexy and I know that's not pretty. But the reality is that that is, that is how God, that is one of the greatest blessings that God can give us when we find ourselves in trouble. It is the ability to walk out and to live out the principles in the word of God. Because when we learn to live out and walk out the principles of the word of God, right? The other stuff begins to fall into place. So James says, if you lack wisdom, I'm done. Y'all can't take no more of this. I'm off it right there. I want to, I want to bend to the chain. You talking about wisdom, preacher. Uh, <laughs> James say you find yourself in trouble. He says you lack, he says you lack wisdom to navigate the trouble. He says the, the ex expected remedy, the expected response from you is continuous, continual, consistent prayer for insight and for stamina. Not just not just understanding, but the ability to live out what you understand. So I'll leave you with that, that question. What are you, what, what challenge are you asking God to give you the wisdom, the wisdom to meet? God says, listen, the reason you don't have it, the reason you don't have it, is because you haven't asked for it. God says, I, 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 I've been waiting on pins and needles to, to pour out my richest blessing of wisdom upon you. And all I'm asking you for, all I'm waiting on is for you to, 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 to trust me, to turn to me in your uncertainty direction and for guidance. So somebody, somebody watching you, 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 you need wisdom now more than ever. The storms are raging around you. And you don't know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know up from down. And you don't know left from right. You don't know what's next and you're not sure what exactly happened behind you. And God says that's that's my way of starting conversation that I've been meaning to have with you. There's some things that we need to discuss. There's some things we need to talk about. I, I, I place uncertainty and instability in your atmosphere because I need you to come to me. I need, I need to talk. We've got some, some catching up to do. So we invite you this week, if you find yourself in, in the storm, Seek God for direction. Seek God for perspective. Seek God for insight. Seek God for wisdom. And seek God for strength. And to overcome and to endure. That's our prayer for you. If you need prayer this morning, we invite you to leave a comment. We'll, we'll pray with you this, this week. We'll pray for you. If you recognize that you or in a place where you are a guilty distance from God, you, you recognize that, that uh, you, you've tried to navigate these storms without the presence of God.
we invite you to receive him, to obey him this morning, to become his child this morning through faith and through obedience. Acknowledge God is who he is. Acknowledge what he's done. He lived, suffered. Jesus Christ lived, suffered, and died for you. Change your mind. Change your attitude. Say, I don't mind the way I've been living. I know it's not right. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to. I want to change direction in my life. I want to change trajectory in my life. I want to live for Jesus. I want to live for God in a way that pleases and glorifies Him. I've tried worldly wisdom. Now I. I need that wisdom from above because there's too much around me that's in me, and I can't. I can't get where I'm going. This is where I want to go. This way, God be somebody who's willing to to make that change, to make that decision in life. Confess Jesus to be the Son of God. Be baptized today in water, in water, for the forgiveness of your sin. You do that right now, God will, at that moment, God will, will take you where you are and he'll change you. He'll tabernacle with you. He'll empower you to live that victorious life we've been talking about. Will, he will give you the strength to endure, the wisdom to make wise decisions. That ought to be your prayer, your desire. You want to be baptized this morning? Leave a comment. We'll, we'll follow up with you. That's going to be our prayer this week. Particularly if you are a child of God because he's the blessing of the children of God. That the Lord will manifest himself in a special way in your life to, to, to reaffirm his presence fact that without him you can do nothing, but with him all things are possible to distrust, have faith in him. Father God, again we thank you for this blessed experience. Father, we thank you for your word divine. This is lamp unto our feet and light to our pathway. Father, we go trust and pray that your word has done what, what it does in this preaching moment. Father, that someone has been convicted, convinced, Father, that we've been agitated in the places of life where we need to be agitated. Father, that we're more determined to develop that sense of endurance, to have a joyful spirit, to develop an insight, not just the sight, but the insight to navigate our trials and our troubles in a way that glorifies you. Father, we ask that you be with us as we go into a, yet another week. Father, we recognize that trouble is all around us. We're surrounded by trouble. But help us to put our hope and our faith and our trust not in what is around us, but what you have deposited within us as your children. Do that for us, Father. That'll be enough. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.